Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Okay, let's begin the lecture. Today we will look at flow equations. Until now we have been looking at um, thermodynamics in the context of uh, gas dynamics uh, or compressible flow. Uh, again uh, please go through uh, thermodynamics uh, if um, you are not comfortable with it. Uh, and uh, thermodynamics is essential uh, to uh, the study of uh, gas dynamics. Uh, along with thermodynamics uh, comes the fluid dynamic equations that is the equations for uh, fluid flow. So, uh, today we look at uh, the integral uh, forms of these equations. Uh, there are uh, different ways in which fluid flows can be analyzed. Uh, this uh, particular approach is known as the control volume uh, approach. So, um, right. So, for control volume approach, uh, the essential uh, sort of methodology approach is the Reynolds uh, transport theorem, where uh, an arbitrary control volume is uh, sort of uh, constructed around. Mm, the fluid flow that we want to analyze and uh, we look at mm, the conservation of uh, different quantities uh, like the mass, the momentum and the energy uh, within the control volume. Uh, there are uh, several advantages uh, with this kind of approach. Uh, we do not specifically need to know all the details of the flow that go inside in such a control volume and you would be more interested in looking at um, what happens at the uh, control surfaces, the fluxes in and out and if there is any change uh, to the parameters within the system. This is distinct from uh, a kind of uh, uh, in a differential analysis which needs a complete information at every point in the uh, flow. So, this is uh, uh, quite powerfully used uh, for uh, many, many applications to come up with uh, relations mm, very easily uh, that can be used for parametric analysis and so on. Uh, so, uh, how does this, so once the control volume is defined, uh, the system uh, changes with uh, both uh, time. Uh, so, you are looking at this. Uh, uh, control volume and looking at how does the system change uh, with uh, respect to time. So, uh, n is any um, uh, uh, property of the system and uh, that is a total property while uh, that is n over here while eta uh, what is represented here is uh, per unit mass. Okay. So, uh, for a, uh, a certain volume of uh, uh, fluid uh, uh, within a control volume. Uh, the mass is uh, given by the density multiplied by the uh, control volume. So, in this case uh, we are taking a small volume that is dV. So, uh, uh, this is the mass of the system. So, uh, multiplied by um, any uh, intensive property. So, the rate of change of uh, that property with time and uh, the uh, the total uh, change that is called the um, change within the system uh, within uh, time happens due to two things. One is um, due to uh, the change of the property within the control volume itself or due to uh, the inflow and outflow of these properties as the flow uh, passes through the control surfaces. So, uh, that is the flux of the um, variable and uh, that part is coming over here. So, um, uh, the uh, total uh, change of the system 
or uh, what is known as the material uh, derivative or looking at the system by following the uh, particle or the system along uh, its motion uh, that change is related to uh, two quantities that is uh, change uh, within the control volume and uh, uh, the fluxes which uh, come into and go out of the uh, control volume. So, uh, here uh, eta uh, or uh, the uh, n is the normal vector to the control uh, surfaces. So, this is a very uh, generic uh, mm, uh, sort of uh, expression which can be applied to many many variables. It relates uh, the rate of uh, change of that property uh, with respect to time. Mm. So, now let us look at uh, different uh, uh, conservation laws uh, for the fluid flow systems. Uh, first one we will uh, look at is the uh, conservation of mass. So, um, uh, the total mass uh, within the system gets uh, is conserved, mm, uh, mass does not uh, change. Uh, so, mm, uh, what we need to uh, look at is look at the Reynolds transport theorem and find out what is that intensive uh, uh, quantity. In this case, uh, the uh, mass of the system is given by uh, density multiplied by volume itself. So, uh, because of that the uh, value of that intensive property is 1. So, if you uh, look at the Reynolds transport theorem and uh, uh, put eta equal to 1, uh, you will get uh, the uh, equations for um, conservation of mass uh, in the uh, system. Okay. So, uh, mass does not change. So, uh, because of this on the right hand side, uh, there is no d d d or uh, m that is mass by d t for the system is uh, 0. So, because of that uh, you on the right hand side you have uh, 0 and uh, v uh, rho v n is the flux of mass out of the system uh, into and out of the system. Um, so, uh, we are considering in this case uh, a fixed uh, control volume that the boundaries uh, do not uh, change in time if they undergo motion then uh, the relative velocity has to be considered, but uh, for uh, all of our practical purposes we consider uh, a fixed control volume and uh, because the control volume and control surfaces are uh, fixed then uh, the derivative of time can be taken out of the integral otherwise it has to be within the uh, integral. So, for a non uh, deformable boundary this statement uh, that is integral of uh, rho dv that is uh, mass within the control volume uh, plus uh, changes due to uh, the fluxes which come in and out of um, uh, the control volume uh, through the control surfaces uh, is going to be uh, 0. So, this uh, statement is uh, straightforward and it is uh, the conservation of mass. Now, let us uh, look at uh, the momentum uh, conservation. So, now momentum conservation or uh, the momentum uh, equation is uh, nothing but the statement of um, the second law of uh, motion, Newton's second law of motion uh, written uh, with the fluid dynamics perspective. So, you are looking at rate of change of momentum which is uh, d m v. Uh, by d t. Now, here uh, you should uh, uh, pay uh, more attention uh, because uh, momentum is a uh, vector quantity. So, uh, the directions of uh, uh, these uh, each uh, component of momentum has to be uh, considered carefully. Uh, now, uh, already we know that uh, mass is getting conserved. So, you can uh, uh, write this, this can be written as uh, following the principles of m d v by d t uh, plus v d m by d t, but uh, from mass conservation this is uh, anyway it is uh, not there it is uh, 0. So, uh, it is m d v by d t 
and what is uh, the net change of uh, momentum equal to it is equal to the uh, net force that is applied on the uh, control uh, volume that is being considered over here. So, uh, uh, m dv by dt ok. So, uh, m uh, total derivative of um, uh, velocity uh, that is uh, nothing but uh, acceleration that is equal to uh, the net force applied on the um, control volume. Uh, so, now uh, if we expand that now uh, the um, intensive property here is the uh, vector velocity and uh, so uh, we can eta will be equal to the vector v and uh, that is how it is getting uh, substituted over here and uh, for a non deformable control volume uh, again we can write by the Reynolds transport theorem uh, the rate of change of uh, momentum is equal to the sum of uh, rate of change of uh, momentum uh, within the control volume with respect to time and uh, change due to uh, the flux of momentum uh, which is the this is flux of momentum uh, that comes from the different uh, control surfaces um, around the uh, control volume. So, what is this now equal to? So, this uh, has to be equal to the net force uh, being applied on the control surface and uh, that has to be uh, considered carefully. So, what are the different uh, forces that come onto the uh, control uh, surface? So, uh, the different uh, control volume, the different forces that come onto the control volume are uh, body forces which uh, act on all the fluid inside the control volume and the surface forces which act only on the boundary of the uh, control volume ok. So, or on the control surfaces and um, F uh, a typical F uh, parameter is uh, uh, the force per uh, unit mass of the fluid. So, um, uh, for body forces this can be a, a Fb that is you can say it is the body force and uh, typically the body force that will be uh, considered is the uh, weight of the uh, uh, mass that is present within the control volume uh, which is just nothing but the gravity force uh, that is it will be uh, rho v uh, that is volume multiplied by uh, the gravity g ok. So, this is the uh, body force that is commonly considered uh, in uh, these kind of flows. Now, uh, the different uh, uh, surface uh, forces that come uh, onto the uh, control surfaces are the pressure forces and uh, the shear stress force uh, or shear stresses and um, we know from their uh, characters uh, that uh, pressure always acts uh, normal to the surface and uh, uh, shear stress which is usually represented by tau. So, this is pressure uh, shear stress acts uh, uh, tangential uh, to the surface. So, uh, when we consider these pressure forces and uh, shear stress forces, we have to take uh, appropriate components uh, when we are doing the analysis. So, uh, uh, details of how we will go about doing this for particular cases like the uh, uh, approach taken for um, a one dimensional uh, system uh, will be dealt in detail in coming classes. Uh, but uh, you have to understand the principle. So, uh, now the pressure force always acts inward uh, to the control surface. Uh, so, uh, it will have a negative sign. So, uh, the force is acting uh, inward. Uh, the sign convention is outward normal is uh, positive. So, this is positive and pressure acts in a direction which is uh, opposite to that. So, you get the negative. Uh, pressure. So, the integral pressure force over the control surface is minus integral P d A over the control surface. Now, uh, uh, shear stresses the overall the complete integral is taken as uh, 
uh, a uh, lumped uh, parameter f force of uh, shear uh, we will uh, generally these forces are quite small uh, compared to the pressure forces and uh, they are considered um, in uh, uh, in most of the analysis they are considered as very small and negligible uh, in the inviscid kind of analysis but there are certain cases when we consider the shear forces also so uh, when we come to that we will go into uh, the detail of how to uh, include shear forces otherwise the integral can be lumped into uh, f uh, shear So, now uh, we are in a position to write the complete uh, momentum conservation equation or the uh, second law uh, uh, of Newton's second law for the fluid flows uh, which is uh, a rate of change of mass within the control volume uh, uh, plus uh, the fluxes uh, across the control surfaces uh, is equal to uh, the sum of uh, body forces and the pressure force and uh, the uh, shear force. So, um, this is the uh, momentum conservation uh, equation. Now, in as uh, I was discussing in majority of uh, cases uh, we uh, first neglect uh, the shear forces uh, because uh, it is uh, considerably smaller. So, uh, we uh, do not consider shear forces uh, for the first cut analysis and then uh, later on uh, we can add if it is uh, important. So, uh, in visit considerations we do not consider f shear and uh, the equation that comes about is uh, given here. Okay. So, uh, we have done um, conservation of uh, mass where um, uh, mass is conserved. Uh, the second is momentum conservation. Then uh, the next uh, that comes into picture is the um, energy conservation, conservation of uh, energy. So, conservation of uh, energy is uh, nothing but the statement of uh, the uh, first law of uh, thermodynamics. Again, we use the uh, Reynolds uh, transport theorem which relates the total derivative uh, of a quantity to um, uh, the uh, changes within the system and the fluxes uh, across it. Now, uh, what we consider is the total energy here and uh, we know that from the statement of um, uh, the uh, first law of thermodynamics this is equal to uh, change in energy is equal to uh, rate of um, heat added to the system and uh, the work done. Okay. Uh, so, uh, if this is uh, taken as uh, negative, so that means is work done by the system. Okay. So, minus uh, del W. So, uh, uh, now in this uh, case uh, uh, from uh, in the previous discussions of the um, uh, uh, thermodynamics we considered uh, the internal energy uh, to be uh, a variable u uh, but uh, specific internal energy uh, but now uh, if we look into fluid flow equations uh, particularly in cartesian coordinates um, then u is generally uh, used for uh, the uh, uh, velocity in the x direction so, in order to avoid confusions uh, in these uh, variables, uh, we will uh, go because we will be coupling this with fluid flow, uh, we will go with the variable E for the specific uh, internal energy. So, the total energy of the system is uh, a combination of uh, or a sum of internal energy, uh, kinetic energy and uh, potential energy which is uh, given here. Okay. So, it is given here and um, as stated the total energy is mass times this um, uh, summation uh, of all the energies and uh, Q dot can be the specific uh, rate of heat added to the control volume. 
per unit mass. So, it is a specific quantity and similarly one can represent uh, W dot also. So, uh, the total uh, uh, heat that is added to the control volume can be represented as integral of uh, Q dot uh, dV over the control volume. So, total uh, amount of heat that is added to the control volume. Now, uh, so from this the intensive property uh, for energy is uh, this uh, parameter E plus V square by 2 plus uh, Gz. Okay. The rate of doing work, now work has to be considered uh, carefully. Uh, just in the, uh, now in the momentum equation we saw that uh, various forces act on the control volume uh, and the control surfaces. So, if there are forces and there is motion then uh, there is work being uh, carried out and uh, we can calculate the work um, that is rate of doing work, rate of doing work is uh, nothing but uh, force uh, velocity where uh, force and dot product of force into velocity. Uh, which is uh, mm -hmm. given over here. These are all the forces that come uh, due to the fluid onto the fluid flow. But you can also have other external uh, forces. Some work is uh, taken out through the shaft. So uh, as is, is done when you are using uh, fluid flows for converting in energy and so on. So that work uh, is additional, which is uh, shaft work. So. Uh, uh, so, the different uh, work due to forces will be work done carried out uh, due to uh, body forces um, and the pressure forces and uh, the shear forces. So, there are the three components and uh, their uh, dot product with the velocity will give you uh, the uh, rate of work done for these forces. Uh, while um, so, that is what is uh, represented over here where uh, this velocity is uh, getting uh, uh, inside the integral. Now, uh, now if you sum that up what uh, it says is the first law of uh, uh, the uh, thermodynamics where uh, this is the uh, rate of change of energy within the control volume. So, this part and uh, mm, this is the flux of energy uh, that um, total flux of energy that comes across the uh, control surfaces and uh, that is equal to uh, work done by different forces and uh, also uh, you have the uh, sh uh, work done by shear as well as uh, that of the shaft. And uh, also there is the term due to the heat. Okay, so that is Q dot dV. That is control volume. So that is um, uh, change in uh, rate of change of energy is equal to um, uh, the total amount of uh, heat that is added to the system and uh, work done on the system. Okay, so if you put that and put everything in place then you can uh, give get the uh, final equations uh, so now uh, we can also carry out a, a small uh, transformation because you have this uh, variable p plus uh, so minus p uh, by rho uh, multiplied by v so this variable is there so that can be uh, included um, within this, this is over the control surfaces while this also integration is over control surfaces. So, this can be moved to the left hand side of the equation and you will get the term within the control surface as uh, rho E plus P by rho uh, plus V square by 2. So, this is what you get. So, here this uh, term E plus P by rho is uh, nothing but E plus P V specific volume, uh, this is enthalpy. 
So, you look at uh, this equation you have the term enthalpy coming into uh, picture here at this place. Uh, please note that this is coming in the fluxes and it is not there uh, in the rate of change within the system. Uh, so, if this also needs to be considered additional terms will come on the uh, right hand side. So, this is rate of change within the system here it is uh, E which is the internal energy, but for uh, the fluxes you can consider the enthalpy. So, finally, uh, when we come to a uh, steady flow that means, uh, the system is not uh, changing with uh, the rate of change with time the in within the control volume is 0. So, dou by dou t for is equal to 0 this is the um, equation. Then you are left with only the fluxes across the control surfaces and uh, that uh, is over here this is h plus v square by 2 plus g z uh, integral rho h uh, plus v square by 2 g z uh, v dot n d a is equal to the heat added and uh, work done uh, by the system. Okay. So, uh, this is the final uh, conservation of uh, energy. So, now we have the three conservation principles all of them uh, put together. Uh, so, any uh, analysis of uh, fluid flows um, we should uh, include uh, all the three equations conservation of mass, conservation of momentum and uh, conservation of energy. Uh, so, now we need uh, principles which will tell us how h is related to other variables like uh, h how is it related to pressure and temperature. These information uh, comes from uh, thermodynamics. So, and how density is related to pressure and temperature. So, these uh, um, relations come through um, the uh, thermodynamics that is how uh, thermodynamics enters into the picture. So, this is a coupled system because uh, rho is not a constant here uh, and uh, all these three equations along with uh, the equation of state have to be used uh, to uh, solve any particular problem. Uh, very soon we will see how this can be applied to get uh, certain uh, simplified forms of these conservation equations in the context of say one dimensional uh, systems. And then we can uh, look into more uh, depth of the application of these uh, principles. So, next class what we will do is um, look at another form of uh, the fluid flow equations uh, which is the differential form. In uh, differential form it looks at the fluid field um, itself. So, it is uh, uh, looks at every particular point and the neighborhood of that point and how uh, the fluid behaves or how it changes in the neighborhood of such uh, point. So, that is a differential approach uh, that is uh, applied over there. We will see that one in the uh, next class.